waiting for a buyer. Yes. <laughs> Why would you want to call it waiting for a buyer? Because it looks like it's more of a personal interest than the interest of the common Wananchi because every political party has its own manifesto. Well, mani manifestos of political parties, really, a lot of them are just generic in the sense that they copy from one party to the other. But there are those, uh, <clears throat> those interesting entrepreneurs, you call them political entrepreneurs, who actually go out of their way to register political parties and wait for any buyer that will come along because they know that the cycle uh, in Kenya, the political cycle in Kenya, always requires a new formation at, uh, at some point in the, in the five-year uh, political life of a government. All right, you say it's um, uh, political, tender pre uh, political entrepreneurs. Yes. But now let's talk about loyalty, political party loyalty. And we've seen some of your colleagues who are in parliament have not been loyal to their political parties. We've seen even some from Ford Kenya, uh, some from um, ODM, some from Jubilee have actually changed their tune and support and have decided to support other political party leaders. Hence the reason as to why even we last year we saw ODM even threatening to actually de-weep some of their members. We've seen a lot of de-weeping in some of the parliamentary committees because there is no political loyalty. And of course, um, some political pundits put it as this will also lead to political instability in the country. I think uh, the reason why we are seeing uh, this sort of disloyalty is because uh, actually this disloyalty, I put the blame squarely at Jubilee's feet because uh, Jubilee have weaponized development. They actually use development to coerce members of other parties to, def to support them. They actually use development to sort of uh, blackmail uh, members of other parties to support Jubilee so they can get development in their areas. So they have virtually weaponized development. And actually, Jubilee has been very, very uh, toxic for the political uh, stability of political parties in Kenya because of this kind of uh, blackmail that they, they indulge in day and night. And that's why you'll find even us in Fort Kenya are having that kind of situation where you, we, we have members who appear not to be loyal to the party. And in fact, one of them uh, said something very interesting, that he were, they were elected on a small party and now they don't feel that they want to continue with it. Yet, without that party, they would not have been elected. So I think uh, uh, Jubilee might be suffering from its own uh, mistakes in the sense that they, are, they, have, they have sowed seeds of disloyalty in the other parties, especially in the, in the NASA-affiliated parties. So right now, when, uh, after they, have, they, they stopped fighting NASA, now they have turned onto each other. And uh, they are the ones who, who, who cause the disloyalty. Now they'll have to face the disloyalty within their own party. And when you talk about disloyalty, let's talk about um, uh, former um, Kakamega Senator Boni Kalwale, who is from your party, that is Ford Kenya. And yet, he's lo he looked like he's changed his tune and is supporting Deputy President William Ruto. He's actually come in the open to talk about it and also, you know, questioning um, ANC party leader Musalia Mudavadi's uh, support for 2022 presidential bid. We have, we have our candidate for 2022. Musale is a candidate for ANC. Fort Kenya and ANC are in talks to see how we can work together. Now, if Dr. Boni Halwale feels that his uh, loyalties are elsewhere and he's a seasoned politician, he knows what party loyalty means, I think it's up to him to actually make up his mind and uh, walk out of Fort Kenya and go to the place where he wants to be rather than uh, stay in Fort Kenya and be supporting somebody else, which is totally against the political party's act. So I think that one, I leave it to his conscience. And, and hence, it, it takes me back to the question that I'd asked you earlier, Ron. This lack of political loyalty is leading to this political instability, which is also seen, which might lead to some parties being dissolved, others, you know, merging with other parties. So why can't Kenya be very strict to their party members by actually cracking the whip? Because you've seen parties saying, we'll crack the whip on so-and-so because you're not supporting our party, our political party ideas, but that, is not, that does not happen at the end of the day. As I said, the cause of this uh, continued political instability in, in, and the continued instability in political parties with disloyalty is actually something that is engineered 
in the sense that members of political parties are told, if you want development, you must come and support us. So they have, they have weaponized development, and they use it for blackmail. And that's what's causing the instability. But I think, generally speaking, if we want political party stability in Kenya, we might have to relook at our electoral system. Because this fast pass the post does not argue very well for stability of political parties. Perhaps you might think uh, seriously about uh, proportional representation. Because if you go proportional representation, then party loyalty becomes so critical that anybody who uh, exhibits any disloyalty is immediately replaced. I think you've seen what has happened in uh, South Africa, for example, when Thambo Mbeki uh, fell out of favor with ANC, there was no election. They just changed the president. The party just changed the president. Same thing when Zuma, Zuma's uh, scandals became too much for ANC, they just removed him and put their Ramaphosa without having to go to a general election. And that's what a parliamentary system with a proportional representation kind of thing can, uh, can work. And that strengthens parties. But the Kenyan system, actually parties are, uh, are what, what you'd call just vehicles people use to, to, to attain power. Because like, uh, for example, in Kenya right now, the oldest party is Kanu, the second oldest party is Ford Kenya, of which I'm the Secretary General. And I'm proud of it, because we have maintained, and we continue to, to maintain. It's, uh, many people have wished Ford Kenya away, but we don't go away because uh, I think our party philosophy is deeper than the individuals who, who prove to be disloyal. So, so they when can you talk go, about but Wishimua. we still always get more more members who are more loyal to the party. When you talk about, uh, you know, uh, washing Ford Kenya away, what is the future of Ford Kenya now that NASA seems to be in shambles? Well, NASA was a coalition. And uh, even if the coalition does, did not exist, Ford Kenya would still exist. So for Ford Kenya, the future of Ford Kenya to me looks very bright. In fact, uh, by the end of this month, we are starting our grassroots elections, which, which is part of the ways of renewing the party so that we have our grassroots elections up to the National uh, Delegates Congress where we elect new members to run the party. And uh, that injects new blood. And that's how Fort Kenya has survived all these years, because we are always rejuvenating ourselves with, uh, uh, after some period of time. And that, uh, that timetable of the, of the grassroots election starts end of this month, January. It will go on up to May to culminate in the National Delegates Congress in June. And that time is when we elect the, lead, the, the people to run the party for another four or five years. So what is the status of Ford Kenya as we speak currently with other coalition um, parties? Let's talk about, because so far Ford Kenya is a member of NASA. Are you planning to pull out of the NASA coalition? At the moment, I would say that uh, we, we technically are in NASA, technically. But uh, for all practical purposes, I think all Kenyans are aware that what happened to our leadership cannot, uh, you know, is not encouraging for us to feel that we have any benefits staying in NASA. But we are not in Jubilee either. So <laughs> that, that, that's, uh, that's, the, that's the paradox that we are living. So you're not in Jubilee either, and you're in NASA technically. Yes. But we've also seen the Deputy President, William Ruto, of late trying to woo um, uh, political leaders uh, from uh, the Western region. So my question is uh, the eligibility of the DP to run for presidency in 2022 and when it comes to support from uh, the Western leaders? Uh, that's what I was saying. They have weaponized development and they use it to blackmail uh, MPs, representatives of the people. But if you want development in your area, you must support a Jubilee. And if you want development in your area, you must visit Zogoi. You know, that's the unfortunate thing. Uh, I think uh, members can, uh, elected members might visit Zugoi and maybe support the deputy president, but that does not necessarily translate to the, to the electorate having the same view. So it's, uh, it's an unfortunate situation because this is something that uh, those of us who, who lived through the Kano era onwards, we recall, you know, it's, uh, it's like echoes from the past. When, uh, when Kanu used to say, if you want development, you must defect and come to Kanu. And actually, people used to defect from the opposition to Kanu. And then they go for by-elections. And Kanu would fund them so that they can win. So this is this kind of, uh, I call it uh, uh, sort of uh, you, 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 people who don't respect democracy. 
they don't respect democracy, they don't, they don't value democracy, and they can do anything to destroy the, uh, the democratic space. And that's what we are witnessing now. Perhaps uh, we might have some respite now until Jubilee gets its house in order, because at the moment, with their confusion, they might not be able to continue pursuing uh, people for, 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 loy for, for loy loyalty changes. I think this, uh, this uh, problem in Jubilee is godsend. Okay, so what is the party's position on the current, um, uh, rather the recent political development uh, within the political sector? Because you've seen um, NASA leader Raila Odinga having um, handshake with President Uhuru Kenyatta. We've seen also co-principal Kalonzo Musioka also being given a position uh, through the government. So what is the, what is the position of uh, Ford Kenya when it comes to these political developments that we're seeing right now in the country? I think... I think on the, on the part of the handshake, I think that was good. It, uh, it has uh, actually calmed the temperatures in the country, and uh, people can actually go on with their work, and uh, the economy can actually improve. I think it was a good, a good move on, the, on, the, on, the, on that part. Then there is, the, of course, the Building Bridges uh, team, which I believe should be more inclusive so that uh, people can give their views uh, openly and see what, which way forward for the country. Uh, and I think in, in that kind of circumstance, as Ford Kenya, we would say that we are not against the handshake per se. What we would like to see is a more inclusive engagement so that all, all, uh, all uh, stakeholders can be able to air their views to see how best we can go on as a country, especially with our sort of uh, uh, ethnicized kind of politics. So as we bring this conversation to an end, just to, you know, do a follow-up of what you've said, Moshimiwa, are you trying to say that uh, after the handshake, there's no inclusivity in, the, in, 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 in uniting the country? Uh, I would say that uh, the, the handshake did well, but the building bridges team, I think uh, there's lack of inclusivity there. But uh, that as it may be, if that building bridges team is willing to go around and collect views from everybody, that will be fine. Already there's talk of a possible referendum. In a situation like that, we need everybody on the table so that we can discuss what is going to be the referendum question. Because it, it's not there just for a few, it's for the whole of the country. We all know that there are some faults in the, in the current constitution that need to be corrected. And we need to all sit at a table and come to a, a compromise situation which can work for the rest of the country. All right, thank you so much, Honorable Dr. Eseli Simiu, who is a member of parliament of uh, Tongaren, talking to us about the uh, political parties' instability in the country. So now, just where is Deputy uh, President Dr. William Ruto in the wake of the newfound political unity between President Uhuru Kenyatta and opposition chief Raila Odinga? Dr. Ruto